would like to talk about uh, why do men cheat? Now, this may not be purely spiritual conversation. It kind of can be because it can save you from uh, doing the wrong spiritual work. Let me just put it that way. <laughs> so, first of all, let's put aside that some men are just wired like that. They cannot be monogamous and that's okay. The key is figuring out if that's the kind of men, man you have around you. If that is and you cannot deal with that, then you're better to just, you know, move on and find somebody that can be monogamous. Now, what are we going to start with? People are animals. That's in our DNA. We are animals that act on instinct a lot of the time. Of course, we have, you know, our brains and our spiritual side and all these sides that can help us to distinguish right from wrong. But we are wired in a different way. Men are wired in one way and women are wired in a completely different way. What we look forward to, speaking generally, this is all going to be general speaking. What women are looking for, generally speaking, is somebody to, you know, help uh, protect, provide, and raise the children with, possibly. What men are looking for is a healthy female to bear his kids and to have as many kids as possible spread the freaking seed. That's, that's the animal in us. So we're going to start from that because that's our basic instinct. It's within all of us. There's no running away from that. So, why do they cheat? When, let's say you have a man that is monogamous by nature, whatever, not one of them dogs, and um, he goes after other women. Well, the whole thing that he should love me um, for who I am, no matter how I look like, is false. We are all visual creatures. Men are especially visual creatures. And don't forget that you probably fell in love with him or fell for him um, because of the way he looks. Not because of his heart but because, or mind. Um, but first and foremost, it was the way he looked. And then he probably pulled you in with the mind and the heart, of course. You know that all of that matters. I'm just talking about the very first thing. Of course, there's exceptions. I'm not talking about exceptions. Talking generalizing. So, c coming from that. One reason that he would cheat would be that you stopped looking physically. Like the type of women that he likes or for the reason that he was attracted to you in the first place. That's one reason. Another reason why he would cheat is that he does not feel like his needs are met um, in the house. And that can be any kind of needs. Um, if he likes his woman to cook for him, if he likes um, to be emotionally um, supported, it just really depends on the guy. What is it that fulfills him? And what is it that he needs? Some men don't like too much attention from women that they feel suffocated. While probably the woman would like all that stuff. Um, so whatever it is that he needs from you and is not being met, most likely it's not being met because there's no communication. That is exactly where I'm going. Regardless of, the reason, of these reasons, regardless which one it is that he's cheating, Communication is the first part to solve this issue. Always. Now, men are usually scared of women. I, I'm not talking out of my ass. I have had plenty of conversations with my own husband and with other guys that are his friends. Men are scared of women. Maybe not scared, but they just don't want to deal with drama that comes from the females. If, let's say, he comes to you and says, look, why don't you go lose some weight? What is he to expect from her? Is she going to start tripping? Is she going to start screaming? So he would rather not say it. 
and probably go somewhere else if the opportunity arises to get his fix. Of course, he's gonna still love you. Love has nothing to do with it. Especially not for guys. Love has nothing to do with his physical needs. Nada. Now, back to communication. The conversation needs to be open, needs to be honest, and there is no way that any one of the parties in this conversation can twist their panties in a bunch. Because you gotta take those hard punches. You have to hear it if you want your relationship to survive. You gotta find out why, what is it that he needs, and but you can also say your own little things because I'm pretty sure that if he feels unfulfilled, so do you. Have that conversation both ways and see what it is that you need to do to fix that problem and what he needs to do to fix that problem. It's always a two-way street. So my advice, let's come back to a spiritual thing. I, and I do understand that this is easier said than done because, you know, sometimes, a lot of times, People let their relationships go into the shit and have a hard time reconnecting and even trying to open a conversation without the other person starting to feel defensive about it or bringing up walls. I never said it's easy. It's very simple on paper, but it's very hard work. But everything is hard work. Even if you want to be a successful spiritual person, a witch, spiritualist, whatever the fuck you call yourself, a lot of hard work is still fucking needed. So the only thing that I can advise is if you're working anything spiritually, work on communication issues. And that's it. But that's my view. You can do whatever you want. And that's it for me.